Today on Fresno State Focus, we take to the skies and learn about the Air National Guard based in Fresno. Plus, we take a look at this week's homecoming schedule. And we look back on the Big Fresno Fair and see just what the community thought about its return after pandemic changes. Fresno State Focus starts now. Hello and welcome to Fresno State Focus. I'm Noah Chavez. And I'm Anna Cruz Lopez. With Fresno State being close to Fresno Yosemite International Airport, it is no wonder there is a lot of air traffic overhead as we head to our classes. I visited with the 144th Fighter Wing to learn what they do in the Central Valley. You can see them. And you can certainly hear them. They're very loud. They're pretty loud and disruptive. It's easy to say that the jets that fly over Fresno State do not go unnoticed. These military aircraft are part of the 144th Fighter Wing, based out of Fresno, and share the runway with Fresno Yosemite International Airport. They are. They're really loud. Captain Jason Sanchez has worked at the 144th Fighter Wing for over seven years. So basically, we have a role in protecting the skies of the United States. That's one of the major reasons why, why the pilots are flying so often, is, is the pilots need to maintain uh, a, a number of flying hours to take on any threat if, if one arises. But the aircraft that take to the skies are only as good as the men and women who work on them. Members like Crew Chief Michael Schieffer. So my role as a Crew Chief is essentially maintaining jets, making sure that they go up when they're supposed to go up, um, sending them out, launching them, and then recovering when they come back, that they're good to fly the next day. And the noise? I understand. Um, it is loud for us here too. Although the jets that are flying over Fresno State are loud, they are not as ear shattering as they are in person on the flight line. So be glad when you're at Fresno State. Huh. Ear protection isn't needed. As Captain Sanchez says, that's the sound of freedom. And that's all the better for the Valley to have the 144th call us home. It is a tradition that happens once every year and one to remember. Yup, it's homecoming week. This year's homecoming is packed with fun, events, and activities for students to enjoy. Here's what's happening this week. Later on today, students can go to the Bulldog Stadium to watch the Black Widow movie. Thursday is night, stu student night with prizes and activities at the women's volleyball game. Friday is Let's Glow Crazy along with Jog with the Dogs free virtual 5K. And on Saturday, it's game day with the Bulldogs facing Nevada at 4 p.m. at the Bulldog Stadium. So lots of fun activities to do this week, Bulldogs. Transitioning from student to a career professional can be a challenge. That's why Fresno State has the Career Development Center. Located at the Frank W. Thomas Building in the center of campus, counselors, advisors, and peer mentors are ready to help any student with their career planning. Whether you need help creating a resume, deciding on a major or in career, or getting a plan together for grad school. The Career Development Center is always open to students in need of academic and professional help. And here we also provide um, um, like cover letters and also a mock interview with career counselors. And if you're like undeclared, then like we have counselors here to help you um, help you to pick an, a major. Or like the Career Development Center is always open from 8 to 5 every weekday to help all Fresno State students reach their academic and professional goals. So the Fresno State Clothing Clothing Also located at the Career Development Center is the Fresno State Clothing Closet. Here, students are given the great opportunity to find business clothing that they can keep for use in the professional work environment. From business suits and ties to blouses and jewelry, the clothing closet will have you looking your best for when you need to be at your absolute best. So the Fresno State clothing, clothing Closet is a place where we take in donations um, from the community or other professors at Fresno State. We sort through them and students are able to come in and find professional wear for either career fairs, interviews, or new jobs that they may have. So they are Open every weekday from 10 to 4, you can go shopping for free to be at your professional best. The big Fresno Fair is over. Aren't you already craving another hot dog? I show you what people have missed most after two years. 
The big Fresno fair was full of people who missed having fun, you know, by getting on all the rides, getting to be with our friends. What I miss most about the fair is the ride and the people. Others missed feeling the romance that the fair brings. I also want to go to the carousel. The carousel is like very like, I don't know, I think it's very romantic. Oh yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right. Fair workers also missed having the incoming crowd and cash. The people here are great. Uh, you guys like to spend money. After being off for so long, it's, been, it's, just, it's just great to be back. While some fair goers enjoy rides and games, others are enjoying the food. Oh, that was really good. Uh, what I missed the most would be the corn dogs. And then for her right here, it'd be the soft tacos. <laughs> yeah. I got three right <laughs> This year, there was almost a 4% increase in food sales since 2019, even though the attendance was slightly lower. The California State University application for fall of 20, 2022 is open for all high school and transfer students. Students can apply to all 23 colleges through one application on the Cal State Apply website. Students will find a major changes in requirements needed. Chal colleges are not asking for SAT or ACT scores. The CSU says it is committed to helping students overcome college admission challenges caused by COVID-19. The application is open until November 30th. The CSU application process looks as if it's easy and straightforward, but for many transfer students, that is not the case. Transfer students need, not, need more to meet requirements and stricter deadlines. If the transfer student isn't accepted the first time, they're asked to submit an appeal, a process where advisors and their emails muddle what is and is it needed. In some cases, transfer students put in more than one appeal and still have to make major changes in order to be accepted into the CSU they applied to. One Fresno State student felt communication with the transfer advisor gave her false hope. I felt just hopeless. Like there was just, man, I, couldn't do, I kept trying and trying and I know I'm a good student and I know that I can do this, but they didn't give me any chance and they were basing it off of something being late. Quintero also said that depending on one's major, a competitive mindset between colleges in the CSU system affected how she was treated when she asked for help from advisors because she was transferring from one CSU to another. Okay. Coming up on Fresno State Focus, we take a look at the Fresno State art exhibit and the pride that comes with it. Plus, we look at the different cultures shown by Fresno State students. And I'm Tony Salazar, and we'll be talking rain and your air quality. A look at your full forecast right after the break. At Fresno State, being bold means committing to something greater than yourself. It's learning by doing and nurturing leaders to advance our shared future. It's using research to create a better life for those around us and healing those who need us most. These are our stories because at Fresno State, Bold begins here. Success. At Fresno State, it's no secret. It's discovering new ways to change our world. It's creating opportunities as diverse as our community itself. It's in the distinction of our graduates as they lead us into the future. Success is no secret at Fresno State. It's our mission. Welcome back. I'm Tony Salazar with the focus on your weather. We're going to start with this video taken today in front of the Kennel Bookstore. And as you can see out in the cloud, you see it was an overcast day with some clouds right in the background. Now we're going to take a look at our nationwide satellite. And I want to turn your focus into uh, really the northern part of the United States where there's actually lots of uh, precipitation as well as a mixture of snow happening over there. And a little closer to home, we see that a lot of that precipitation is actually still out in the ocean over there. And so it'll make its way back into uh, Northern California, into San Francisco and San Jose. So they'll be seeing some scattered showers over there. 
Here's a look at today's high. Again, stocked in 68, and the majority of the Central Valley is going to be at mid to upper 70s. And in Hanford, for example, 77, and in Fresno, 77. Here's a look at tonight's low. Again, majority of the Central Valley is going to be in the low to mid 50s, with Fresno at 53. And here's your focus on air quality. Good air quality for majority of Central California, but look at this. Moderate air quality for Fresno, Tulare, Sequoia National Park and Forest, as well as Kern County. Now here's your extended outlook forecast. As you can see, we'll be in the 70s for the remainder of the week, but once we get a Sunday, that's when we get rain. Yes, rain. And on Monday is a really good chance of rain with 86% chance of rain. And on Tuesday, it'll be sunny. That is a look at your forecast. I'm Tony Salazar, Anna and Noah, back to you. There is a new art exhibit here at Fresno State in collaboration with the Brooklyn Museum and the Center for Creativity and the Arts. The Phoebe Conley Art Gallery is displaying Nobody Promised You Tomorrow, a collection of installations by 28 LGBTQ plus artists was put together as a way to inspire and create open dialogues of, um, of meaningful conversations in honor of the Stonewall Uprising from 50 years ago. It's basically an installation that's commemorating Stonewall 50 years later, and we're incorporating all LGBTQ plus um, curators and artists to kind of commemorate what has happened and it's people making art since then. The exhibit will remain open until October 31st with hours open from 10 to 4 Tuesday through Friday. I got to learn more about the exhibit by talking to Cindy Yerudia, the director of Center for Creativity and the Arts. Center for Creativity and the Arts um, obtained a grant to help bring strong arts programming to Fresno State. So with this grant, um, I was able to reorganize this exhibit along with the Brooklyn Museum of Art who originally curated and organized the event. So a lot of this art is coming from different parts of the world and the country. The Stonewall Uprising, could you clarify what that is? Sure, of course. So. As we know, um, having equity for different identity groups has been a long journey, and it is no different for the LGBTQ plus community. So in the 60s and earlier, as well as the 70s, it was quite common for police officers to raid what was at the time called gay bars. So usually on a weekend, you know, members of the community would go to a bar, interact with one another, and it was quite normal for, for there to be a police raid. One day, people at the Stonewall Inn in New York said, no more, we're not gonna be raided every weekend. We are gonna stand up for our rights. And that's what happened. So there were um, multiple days of uprising and the Stonewall uprising has led to a lot of civil advocacy and a lot of people mobilizing within the LGBTQ plus community to try to fight for their basic civil rights that every identity group is asking for. Well, thank you, Cindy, for have, taking the time to speak with me today. I hope you have a very pleasant afternoon. Thank you, and thank you for having, and please come visit this exhibit. It is Rudia would like to add that she hopes that students and members of the community alike can view the gallery and become uplifted and inspired as she has. The Central America for Empowerment Club at Fresno State highlights its countries for Teach Central America Week. Central America is made up of seven countries, Guatemala, which means land of many trees, Belize, home to the second largest barrier reef, El Salvador, known as land of volcanoes. Honduras has the largest hieroglyph in the world. Nicaragua has Central America's largest lake, Costa Rica, known for its beautiful national parks, and Panama, the only place in the world where the sun rises on the Pacific and sets on the Atlantic. Fall is filled with celebrations honoring Hispanic heritage. All are welcome to celebrate as we acknowledge the contributions of people who share their culture within the American society. From September through November, we reserve a time of reflection. The fun is not over. Dia de los Muertos is around the corner. These times are more than just a fun show or a culinary experience. Fresno State requires a Chicano Latino studies class, which teaches students about diversity. Even if you don't agree with anything that took place in class, 
you know, that's still learning. You still learn what other people think, how other people feel, how other people view the world, right? And you still learn about other people's experiences without without having to agree with them. You just are more familiar now, right? right. So the goal is not to have you agree with everything. The goal is to you to be exposed to that perspective. And we also get to show others like who we are. And what follows from that is that we also continue learning from our heritage, like me personally, I'm learning like more about the culinary side of it. And it's just really fascinating. Fresno State is enriched with the 52% diversity of Hispanic students who represent many different countries. To enjoy the festivity, be sure to reflect on the meaning of the celebrations. Over 400 Fresno State Greeks gave back this past weekend. Fresno State's Delta Gamma Sorority hosted its Philanthropy Weekend event where all proceeds go to their foundation, Service for Sight, which helps people who are visually impaired. The Delta Gamma Sorority put on their Philanthropy Weekend event, Anchor Splash. 450 Fresno State Greek Life members came together at the Fresno State Aquatic Center to raise money for Delta Gamma's foundation, Service for Sight. The weekend started off with a backyard barbecue at the sorority house where all were welcome. A portion of what we raise goes towards Service for Sight and local organizations like Valley Center for the Blind, Guide Dogs for the Blind, um, also the Veterans Hospital. Anchor Splash is a mock swim meet where participating fraternities compete in different swimming events to earn points for their team. All in good fun, there was also a synchronized swimming portion where the fraternities once again competed for the best routine. As a senior, I'm really going to miss just the environment of Anchor Splash. Like, we all get very excited. It's my personal favorite event. Um, I'm just going to, I'm going to miss everything about it. It's just, it's a really fun time. And as a senior, I'm really sad that this is my last one. After the Fun in the Sun events, everyone headed over to Greek Mall located on Millbrook Avenue to finish off the competition. To conclude the philanthropy events, one member from each fraternity participated in a pageant where they were quizzed on service for sight facts and got to show off their individual talents. Sigma Chi fraternity took home the championship trophy. These events helped Delta Gamma raise money and awareness for service for sight. This past weekend was definitely worth the splash for Delta Gamma as they lived by their motto, do good, by raising almost $10,000 to give to their local organization, Valley Center for the Blind, located here in Fresno on Shaw. Brooke Chow, Fresno State Focus. All 15 Greek organizations will put on weekend events this semester, just like this one, to raise money for their chapter foundations. A Fresno Unified Elementary School just got approved for a name change. That name change will honor a beloved Fresno State professor and a highly respected member of the Fresno Armenian community. Roger Tatarian grew up in Fresno's Armenia town. He got his journalism degree here at Fresno State, went on to become the editor and chief of the United Press International, a worldwide news service. He then returned to Fresno State to teach. He was inducted into our Media Communications and Journalism Hall of Fame in 2010. Brooke Chow is live at Forkner Elementary to tell us more about this name change. Yes, I'm live here at Forkner Elementary, which will be renamed after the well-renowned journalist and Fresno State professor, Roger Tatarian. And with me today is Marshall Magugian, who is an attorney here in Fresno and is involved with the name change. How are you involved? Uh, well, thank you. I've been involved in Armenian issues pretty much all my life here in Fresno. Uh, so when I got the call to join the committee, I naturally joined. Um, we had, you know, mundane strategy meetings, but um, someone who's been writing for the Fresno Bee for over 25 years on Armenian issues. I had an opinion piece in the Fresno Bee a couple weeks ago. Uh, I spoke at the two board meetings, um, reached out to Armenian organizations as well as other people to develop support for this cause. Yes, now let's talk about the controversy about this name change. Is it because the Roger Tatarian name was being bounced back with the Fresno Unified school that's being developed in Southeast Fresno, or also now that J.C. Forkner's name is being brought to light about the racial acts with real estate in the 50s. I think it's not controversial. Roger Tatarian, uh, the man, the Armenian man, uh, the world-renowned journalist, the beloved professor at Fresno State, nothing's controversial about him. What was controversial, and it's past tense now because the issue has been resolved, 
was the way Fresno Unified went about the naming process at the new school in downtown Fresno on Ventura Street back in the spring. Uh, long and short of it is they did some very improper things. And so we acted up, uh, made our concerns known to them and moved forward with this change. We didn't wanna be here. Uh, we were hoping they would have done the right thing the first time around. Um, so that's that. Um, the controversy, you know, people don't like change sometimes. And that's what we got a lot of at the very end of this process. But um, we've done the right thing. Uh, Roger is a, an admirable person uh, who's deserving uh, uh, being on a school, that's for sure. Thank you. And the school will be renamed as soon as next year and as early as next fall. Live here at Forkner Elementary, Brooke Chow, Fresno State Focus. Coming up in sports, we take a look at the football team's latest this win and what the they are looking ahead to. New Mexico. Also, we meet two more Fresno State Focus team members, Anna and Lily. We'll be right back. Here in the valley, our colors are blue and our waves are red. Bulldog born and bulldog bred. Generations linked forever by traditions that have stood the test of time. Inside our stadiums, we are one. This is our valley, and this year, we're doing it for you. At Fresno State, being bold means committing to something greater than yourself. It's learning by doing, and nurturing leaders to advance our shared future. It's using research to create a better life for those around us and healing those who need us most. These are our stories, because at Fresno State, bold begins here. Welcome back, I'm Ruby Roque with your focus on sports. The streak is over. Fresno State Soccer's impressive 15-game home win streak is over at the hands of the Lobos. The Bulldogs hosted the New Mexico Lobos Sunday in a matchup of the two best teams in the Mountain West. In the low-scoring game, New Mexico came out on top with the win at 2-1. But even with this loss, the Bulldogs still hold the number one ranking in the Mountain West Conference. The Bulldogs will travel up to Reno on Friday to play the Wolfpack of Nevada. A third sweep this season for the volleyball team as the Bulldogs took down the Nevada Wolfpack at home. The Dogs took all three sets in the match, giving head coach Jonathan Winder his perfect 5-0 record when facing the Wolfpack. Star player Les Desiree Sakov led the team in kills again with a total of 13. The team is now in a three-way tie for sixth place in the Mountain West. The Bulldogs' next matchup will be a heated one against the Boise State Broncos at the Save Mart Center tomorrow at 6 for staff and faculty night. The Bulldog Stakes is a Fresno State-themed horse race. It took place on the last day of the Big Fresno Fair. There were eight jockeys competing for the 2021 Bulldog Stakes. The crowds were cheering on their favorite jockey and horse, or the horse they bet on. It was two laps around the dirt track. Number six, Irving Orozco and his six-year-old horse, Cesspool, won first place in under two minutes. Horsemen, and jockeys, trainer, owners, we look forward to the fairs, but uh, Fresno is definitely one of our favorites, and uh, we hope to keep doing this every year. Orozco and Cesspool won the Bulldog Stakes Trophy and $75,000 guaranteed. Supporters were happy and took pictures with the winner. A shutout in Laramie, Wyoming, as the Bulldogs got their first shutout on the road since 1974. The Dogs' destructive defense was a huge factor in their win over the Cowboys last Saturday. Both teams struggled with offense. The Bulldogs only got 96 yards of passing and 163 yards rushing. The low-scoring game was ultimately decided by the strength of the Dogs' defense, which moved the Dogs' record up to 5-2. and two. I think that's a sign of a great football team is, is finding different ways to win, whether it's you know, uh, offense or defensive, uh, you know, like today with a shutout or, um, you know, with the, with the, the pass game or the run game, um, finding different ways, I think is a, is a big deal. And, you know, there's things that we got better at today um, that will carry over. The dogs hope this will be the start of a new win streak. This Saturday's game will be a special one. It's Fresno State homecoming game. The Bulldogs will take on the Wolfpack of Nevada. Game time, 4.30. And that is this week's Focus on Sports. October is Down Syndrome Awareness Month. 
Down syndrome is the most common birth defect in the U.S. Approximately 1 in 700 babies is born with a genetic disorder. But as our Tony Salazar shows us, one organization is putting together events to stop the stigma and spread awareness. And I love everything, like everywhere. This is Brianna Falcon, a senior at Bullard High School and a Walk of Fame superstar, one of many participants in the annual Step Up and Drive for Down Syndrome event in Clovis. And uh, she just has a great spirit. She loves participating in Special Olympics and all sorts of activities. The Down Syndrome Association of Central California is a big hearted team that organizes events like these to pave the way for more acceptance, appreciation, and overall inclusion of Down Syndrome. And so they came through what we'd call our Yellow Brick Road, meeting different vendors from the community that serve individuals with special needs. It's event like this that put a big smile on Falcon's face, who says she's thankful to everyone for the support. I love my friends, my families, and me, like everything, everybody. everybody. That everybody includes her teacher, who says he enjoys attending these events and supporting his students. This is what I live for. I mean, uh, my job is a teacher, but things like this really build character and independence for individuals. So I, I just love kind of things like this. The Down Syndrome Association of Central California tell me that their goal is to fundraise $60,000, which will go towards educational and resources programs, along with the overall awareness of Down Syndrome. Reporting in Clovis, Tony Salazar for Fresno State Focus. If you would like to help the Down Syndrome Association of Central California, a link to their donation page will be posted along with this story on our website at FresnoStateFocus.com. Now it's time to meet our focus team. Lily Gonzalez is a senior majoring in broadcast journalism. She takes classes from home all the way in the Bay Area. She is a mom to Abby and has her husband's support. Lily is a proud Latina and an advocate for women with language barriers. Ever since she was a kid, she knew she wanted to work in media, be culturally connected to her roots, and inspire other Hispanic women. That they can look up to and they can say, well, if she could do it, I can do it. You know, kind of start seeing more of us on the news. Um, but that's my goal, to be an anchor. Lily says her daughter Abby is her strength. Her grandma Carmen said to Lily, hazle como se pueda. Do what you gotta do. That is her life motto. Now it's time to meet Anna Cruz Lopez. Anna is from San Joaquin. As the oldest of five, caring for her family is a priority. A senior set to graduate this winter with a major in broadcast journalism along with a minor in criminology. When Anna isn't reporting or anchoring, she enjoys taking care of her personal and physical health. From a young age, she knew that cameras, lights, and action were her attraction. In no, my junior and senior year in high school, we had this class called RP Video with Mr. Brown, and I took it as an elective. And we did um, like news. We literally had newscasts, um, literal ones, um, not as as good as ours, you know. But it was so fun, like to go around, ask people questions, um, record, and I I loved it. And so this semester, we have a front row seat to see Anna in action. She has several options to choose from when it comes to settling down after graduation. Now, Anna, it has been an honor being able to work with you, and we are certainly going to miss you when you graduate this next winter. Yes, I miss you guys too, and I'm so excited to meet the team crew. Uh, we'll be having them next week. Meet the crew next week. Next week on Fresno State Focus, we take a look at the California Blood Center and learn about the need for donors. Also, we see how parents are feeling about the vaccine mandate. Next week is our Halloween episode, so expect some extra spookiness before Halloween. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next week. <laughs>